Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It is very hot. It's not even it's not even the full heat yet and I'm already feeling I'm trying to take a nap and whatnot, but I decided I wanna make a video today or make this video today and just in case if anyone ever wants to do this mod, which is gonna be in the thumbnail of the video, I'm gonna show you how I did it and why I chose to do it the way I did it. Also the beginning of this video or the video itself is gonna be very, um, I guess, nerdy in a way. So if you don't like me talking on how I did it, then I suggest you skip to whichever part it's gonna be. I don't know. Well, I'll most likely put it somewhere up here on the screen, showing you how I did on the actual hatch itself. But I am gonna show you step by step on how I did it. That way you don't have to figure it out. First off, let me find a freaking pen. Oh, I have one in my car. No. All right, so I got my pencil, my pen, and paper. And I will also start off by saying is if you damage your vehicle, car, doing this, obviously you're civic because that's what I'm doing it on. They can technically apply it to any other car, if that makes sense, depending on how you you get some knowledge from this video but i am not responsible um for the doing of this um only do it if you're comfortable and um yeah that's pretty much it you know just do it at your own risk if you're not comfortable with wiring um it's not hard but you do kind of have to have a good understanding of how relays and triggers work for this setup at least for the way I'm doing it. But yeah, do it at your own risk. I am gonna show you step-by-step step on how I did mine in order for me not to have any issues. And yeah, claim throw your own caution. Let's begin. All right, so this is a blank state where we're starting off. What I'm gonna start off with is the distributor for a regular Honda. If I'm not mistaken, this should work for any car that has a distributor, it being EG, EK, um, even DC, DA, EF, um, anything distributor based. Technically, it should work with any other car at that matter. But there's another thing. I know it's also, I think it's called a, like a hot link kit that they sell. It's like, last time I checked, it was about 200 and some change, almost $300. I could be wrong. That's the last time I checked. Um, and the reason for me doing it the way I did it is because one, I already had everything OEM. Two, I spent maybe with the cost of everything, probably like $80, $60 at the most to make this kit. And two is because, I think I already said two, three, whoever knows what I'm wondering now. Um, the convenience, if anything does go out, you know, I can just go to an auto parts store rather than having to order something. And I just already had anything on hand, so I was like, you know what? I'll make work with what I got. Cause Honda. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's not like a benefit compared to the kit they already saw online. It's just what we already had on hand. But I'm gonna quit the blabbering. And let's start this kit. Alright, starting off, we are gonna do the relay. Okay, I went ahead and just ended up I guess drawing everything so this is how my relay works my relay um my flame kit i guess you can call it put it up here flame kit so yeah seems like a lot but i'm gonna break it down step by step on how i did it so this video is gonna be kind of long but that way no one has any not that i mind the questions but any confusion or anything like that i know someone's probably gonna be like oh like why make it so much work this and that like i said everything is oem and this is how i did it with what i had on hand i didn't have to spend nearly any money and it works let's begin this doesn't sound so confusing right now because i want to make sure i give this as detailed as possible for some people it's like just show the flames already get in there get in there okay so this is basically everything you're gonna need for the flame kit 
put this down because if not someone i believe will ask so you're going to need a five pin relay um typically these shouldn't be too expensive you can get them at your local auto parts store Rayleigh's, autozone napa whatever you got or if you want to order them by all means i would say at least get a decent brand because for some reason when i was doing it i was having a lot of issues with them but yeah you want a five pin relay has to be a five pin relay not a four pin it has to be a five pin relay i'll explain why next you need a, a ignition coil as i stated in the video i used everything oem honda because that's what i had and that's how i made the kit for convenience of parts so this is an oem honda ignition coil that comes out of your distributor and this is my muffler yes you will weld a spark plug to the end of your muffler and this is your oem honda distributor right here and if you're wondering what this little guy is right here this is my trigger that's next to my steering wheel so now i will explain how everything works let's get started i guess in the beginning of the video if you guys don't like the nerd talk or don't want to hear the nerd talk i would suggest you skip to this part here i'm assuming you don't know which part that is but yeah skip to that part i'll show you how it's wired in the car it's gonna be the same thing right here just you know a lot more straightforward i guess but let's begin so for starters like i said from the beginning this is what you're gonna need so basically to run this kit obviously you need a second ignition coil and if no one knows how an ignition coil basically works it's like the same thing as a coil pack on a newer car but basically it's just one inside your distributor so there is something in your dizzy called an icm ignition control module that is what controls your ignition coil and your distributor telling it when to fire from sensors like your crank um, cam etc i'm not going to go into that but that's your basically what's giving the signal for spark for your coil your sorry your ignition coil you need to get signal from here to here when we want which is what the relay is for and have this running oem when we want that's where this guy comes in play so for starters right off the rip 85 this right here will go to ground it can be ground to your chassis to your battery whatever you choose i grounded it out to my starter because and i'll show you that on my car where i mounted it why and how for convenience reasons okay so from there knowing this icm right here icm is what controls the spark to the ignition coil which is this one right here inside your honda distributor what i did some people are gonna be like what the flipping but this is the way i thought about it and how it could work basically you're gonna slice that little wire in half this is still gonna be the yellow i believe yellow green wire inside your distributor it's a small small wire you literally just cut it in half one end or both ends actually will feed out to where your plug is at you don't connect them to the plug you just feed them out so basically it'll look like this as confusing as that may seem i know i'm sorry but just know this wire is now cut in half this end right here all comes out and this other end comes right here so, so like i said i cut the wire this is now trigger from the ecu and this wire will be considered to the ignition core why does that matter this is why so just know this wire you will go to pin 30 on your relay or like this from ecu icm just like that this is icm goes to pin 30 which is a yellow green wire now the other wire that came from the ignition coil which is this guy right here will go to 87a i just drew this just if you guys so that wire will go to that center pin right there okay so this is the first layout ignition coil icm no the wires aren't really this long in person just to illustrate it better so yeah icm wire that's this guy in here one on the wire one end of the wire that comes out goes to pin 30 
The other end from the ignition coil, which is right here, goes to pin 87A. So that way, when you turn on your car, 30 and 87A is a normally closed operation, so signal will always get passed through, therefore, to make your car run. Ta-da! Okay, now someone's asking, so how do you get the flame kit to work? This is how. So, we have signal going through, so the car stays running. We have ground. Now, we need to figure out how to get the signal from this ICM, which is passing through here, out of this port 87. So we need to figure out how to activate the relay to send a signal to that guy right there, which is a negative signal coming from the ECU. It's a ground signal. So I'll start off by saying 87, pin 87, will go to the negative post on your ignition coil, right here. Negative post, right here. Bingo. Next, from the distributor side, there's gonna be, I believe, a black wire, a black and white wire, or a black and yellow, I can't remember which color it is off the top of my head right now, but there's a black white wire that's basically power for the distributor and the ignition coil inside. That wire, before the plug, basically engine harness side, I personally did this this way. Um, I just feel like it was easier instead of using something else. I tapped into that wire and fed that all the way. This is gonna get confusing very fast now. Stay with me, guys. Stay with me. Positive post of the ignition coil right here. Okay, so now it's gonna get very confusing. Start over again. ICM, that's in the distributor. Yellow, green wire. One end goes to pin 30. Ignition coil yellow green wire that once was connected together. Other end now goes to pin 87A. Pin 85 goes to ground. Pin 87 goes to the negative post on the real on the ignition coil. Sorry, ignition coil. And the battery positive now goes tapped from power from a distributor. So it's basically saying, you know, this one's feeding this one and it's feeding this one. So now all we have left is pin 86 right here. This is gonna be the pin that does all the magic for us to activate this relay. So on my car, since everything is deleted, uh, like I'm talking like washer motor, um, I think that's about it to be honest guys. The car doesn't really come with much, oops. I did delete the washer motor and in my car, the washer motor would get triggered for the wiper arm is back. When I pulled it back, it would trigger it, but I don't have that no more. So my trigger is when I pull my washer arm or the wiper arm, whatever, when I pull it back and since it no longer uses or it's meant for the washer motor, I tapped into that wire and that wire now became my trigger. I hope that's making sense. A trigger can be a button, a switch, a flip. The fuck? A flip. If you know what I'm trying to say, anything that can be used to send a signal, signal of voltage, to the relay to activate it. Because you have ground on this side and power on this side, vice versa. If you have something that gives out ground, then you would just give out power to this one constantly, and then use 85 as your trigger. But my wiper arm gives all power so that's what i'm using to trigger it and then 85 just stays grounded so once i give this terminal power and i flick my wiper arm that activates the relay then this switches to pin 87 meaning it takes away spark from the main dizzy then sends it to pin 87 to the new ignition coil and now that's receiving spark as if it were the engine distributor one. If that made sense, that's not a hell of confusing. But now this has power already from the black and white wire. Therefore, it's giving us spark. So guess what we gotta do now? Spark plug at the muffler. So that's how we do it. From there, you will get a spark plug wire. Uh, okay, put it, I'm just put it right here. This is a port. This is what's sending out the spark right here. A little zap symbol 
Heavy beam mix, I don't even know. That wire will now go to your spark plug and trigger it. Makes sense. Okay, time for the beginning again. I know it's gonna confuse people because it confused me when I first made it. So here we go. Five pin relay, pin 30 from the ICM. Pin 87A from the ignition coil. Pin 85 to the ground. Pin 86 to your trigger. Pin 87, negative post on the ignition coil. Positive for the ignition coil comes from the same exact power source that your Dizzy is using, which is your ignition. From there, use the uh, spark plug wire, run into your spark plug. So anytime you hit the trigger, this kills spark from your distributor and sends it to the second ignition coil right here to activate that spark plug. I hope that made sense. And like I said, if you're using a trigger that is ground, like giving ground, then you can technically use this power, tap it in with 86, that'll have constant power and it won't be activated till you give your ground signal to this pin. Hope that doesn't sound confusing. It most likely is. I'm trying to explain this as best as possible. Yeah, if someone wants to copy that, go right ahead. I'm most likely gonna edit this video and be like, oh, I forgot to say something, which if I did. Oh, another thing too, when you all the spark plug, um, I was told from recent videos that I looked up to, or not looked up to, looked into, um, I guess the more farther back to the tip you weld it to, the bigger the flame. I'm going to experiment with that. I still want to weld another spark plug, like more behind, see if it helps it or not. But yeah, I'm going to a clip right here of how big I got the flame in the beginning. And then a rolling shot one. So yeah, time to show you how it's done in the car. And I hope everyone is understanding this right now. If your brain is not melted yet, good job. Like I said, I am not responsible for something that happens to your car. What's up, fool? Okay, so the naked eye can't even tell this thing has anything in it. But I will show you guys right here, right away. This is my relay. Dang, Tom. And look at that. The ignition coil is right back there. So, right here inside the distributor, you know I'm gonna just take it apart so I can show you guys what I'm talking about from the paper. Okay, so I took over the distributor so no one will get confused because I know someone will, not in a bad way, but oh, this can get pretty confusing. So this is the yellow green wire that I'm talking about. This wire right here will technically go to the minus symbol right here to your ignition coil. This wire technically should be just from here to here, literally. So I can send the paper. You will cut it. And as you can tell, I tuck mine away very tightly down here. You will cut it and run it through the outside right here. I cut the little grommet out on the distributor. You can tell right there. Oh. And I labeled it. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Right there. ICM. So that's how I knew uh, that's the signal coming from this. And then the signal from the ignition coil, which is right here, negative, I sent out. And it comes out right over here a little bit. All right there. Oh, you can't tell. Oh. Right there, it says cool. So I know which one needs to be sent out and which one needs to be sent in, if that makes sense. And that matters a lot because if you flip them and you trigger it, it won't work how it's supposed to and vice versa. So yeah, those two wire, that wire gets cut. And from there, this wire right here, this that I'm pointing at, it's upside down, but it's my relay. That wire you will feed to pin 30 on the relay, which is this terminal right here. This wire goes to this wire right here. From there, this negative one, you will send to pin 87A. As you can tell right here on the relay, it is normally closed. So you turn on the car, it sends signal. It'll go from here, through the relay, back out the relay, back up to here. So it basically just flows, it runs. Next, distributor which I have tucked away but it's freaking hot in here you can tell 
I oh yeah there we go black yellow I thought I swear that was black white but I depinned mine I took it all the way out and then I soldered it onto the pin itself and here that's how you see the wire coming out this wire literally runs you see I have a terminal on there to the positive of the ignition coil this ignition coil is literally this one right here like I said I had spare parts so that's gonna be amazing I'm using this ignition coil down there second one that positive from that distributor plug right here it's merged inside there comes out to the positive right there so it's always getting power this power wire is technically what's getting power from here the plug comes out so all right now we got that portion done all right so next thing you want to do is pin 87 right here pin 87 which is that one right there like i said normally open you'll run that wire which is this bottom one right here you can't really tell but it's the bottom one right here this wire where is it at so yeah pin 87 will come out of the relay and the back to the relay it has numbers pin 87 comes out of the relay and goes to the negative post on your ignition coil. Negative. Which that minus. And these are the posts I'm talking about. The positive and a negative. When I'm talking about post, I'm referring to these right here. So 87 will go to the negative on that ignition coil down there. I have mine routed right there. That's where it's at. So yeah, like I said, I hope this is making sense. I really do. I'm trying my very best to make sure it's fine. next your trigger my trigger is like i said it can be a button a switch a toggle something momentary whatever you want to do it's just the trigger is basically whatever activates it it can be aftermarket it can be oem i did not want what the heck is this me i didn't want to use anything aftermarket because i just do not like having anything like switches and stuff like that that aren't factory and i just don't like adding extra stuff if that makes sense and like i said my washer trigger which is this guy right here um i don't have the washer motor installed in the car anymore because tucked etc etc you know i'm not gonna feed myself but yeah i don't have the washer motor anymore i knew off the back that this when i pulled it back activated the washer motor and i said that's gonna be my trigger when i pull this back it immediately sends out a 12 volt signal to my relay obviously i had to cut it let me see if i can show you where i tapped into right here let me get the perfect right there so right there i opened up the loom i found which wire it was cut it put it in the spade terminal and the other wire right here that you see with the blue crimp on it it's very tucked up but that wire goes underneath i don't know if you can see it yep that one right there goes underneath down there outside wraps around you can see it where is it i took that thing stupid good god damn it i can't really see where it's coming from because i tried you know hiding it as best as i could oh yeah you can barely tell right here yeah see so this wire i'm holding right here my fingers that's what's coming from the inside so it's coming through the firewall that i have a hole down there and that's going to pin 86 right here like i said my trigger so once i hit that switch and i have a car on this relay then activates stops sending signal to this guy and sends a signal to that guy down there so from there what's left how does it get to the spark plug so this way right now i'm gonna show you guys is very janky but i will put a link in the description you can actually buy spark plug wire it's like i think 30 40 dollars so you can use proper wire I used, I believe it was like 16, 14 gauge wire for this because it's just voltage, it's not amperage. Someone's gonna tell me something in the comments, I'm sure of it, but so far I haven't had any issues. But I did use, dang, it sounds bright up. I did use an OEM Honda um, spark plug wire and I sliced it right in half. I then took off the insulation. It's literally just a spring of wire just coiled up all the times and got a long piece of wire and I just soldered it together. Someone's in there. Let the cat begin. 
that's all I have at the moment. I will put a regular sparkler wire. But this is just so you guys, if whoever sees this, you're gonna be like, what the? That's why it's there. And you guys know from right now. So the ignition coil sends out spark to this little spring right here. Mine's kind of beat, but it, it works. But this is just an example. So you need to get spark from this post to the spark plug. That's all the way back. Right there. And that's right behind the muffler tip. So, like I said, I've got a regular spark plug wire cut it took this spring out put one end then the ignition coil wrapped in the hose clamp so it doesn't come off or anything wrapped it in there i cut it half stripped insulation on the spark plug wire soldered a i believe it was like a i did pretty thick wire you know i wasn't dumb about it but wrapped and soldered a good wire to it you can see right here hold on one second you can see right here where I wrapped it. Oh, damn it. Right there. So that wire soldered out right there. And then it runs through the back, down the car. And then I have holes drilled with mounting zip ties. Let me see if I can show you guys. Oh, you can see the wire right there. I drilled holes and used zip ties all across the floorboard. <laughs> but yeah, there's zip ties. They're like, um, I don't know how to explain it. But they basically have like a little like mounting tab on it. You'll drill a hole to the size according and the tab just shoves right in like an OEM zip tie would be. Find one like this right here. So you see this end, it goes into the car. You obviously drill a hole. I drilled a little bit smaller. So when I push this in, it basically forced it in there. It didn't come out. From there you have the zip tie and I just wrap the wire in that. And be cautious of where you mount this at. I mean, I was gonna do it on the inside of the car, but I didn't want to take apart the interior, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, I wound it underneath the car where I knew I was not gonna scrape, anything would happen to it. Um, just be mindful where you route this because if you mount it anywhere where it gets caught, rubber gets, or rubber, um, metal wears on it, or things of that nature, you know, that's enough freaking sense spark to that because basically the spark goes to the path of least resistance so if you yeah just make sure that things covered up good and from there that wire runs all the way to the back it's all the way to the back it goes behind the little control arm like i said everything's routed up nice and tidy and then the other end of the spark plug wire you can see right here the zip tied up front right there and then what i did for that end is it took up the whole little like boot that goes inside the spark plug wire and that part i basically just bent and then use that to connect to it so basically i just got any old wire i had like i said i would recommend you order one which i'll put in the link down below that way you can just build your own you don't have to go freaking scavenging for one but if you guys have one on hand i basically just cut it right here stripped it you'll see coil in here coil in here once you strip it solder a piece of wire from this end this end goes in there. This end right here. I basically took all this plastic off and then just use this end to go on the spark plug itself on the back of the muffler. Soldered the wire from here, you know, route it to here. Basically just extend the spark plug wire is all I did. And from there, it goes to the muffler. Back down in there. Oh, you can't see it, but yeah. That's how that works. Wire welding because you have to get a bung. I got mine from AutoZone. Um, I had to make it work because it's not like, I forgot how to say it, but basically I just cut it. So when I welded it, I knew the spark plug was like a decent depth into the motor tip. Cause well, you know, you kind of have to, I, I did it to where you can see the spark pretty good. Cause I don't know how far down the spark had to be, etc. but. Yeah, I got the two bungs, one for my brother's car, one for mine. Welded it on there with the regular flux for welder and threw it on there. You guys are wondering what spark plug I used? I have some old uh, spark plugs. All right here, the regular iridiums. You know, oh yeah, Honda stuff, nothing. Like I said, everything I've used is genuine Honda because if one day that coil goes out, um, I just go to AutoZone and buy one. If, 
not saying the kit is bad, but if I bought the kit that's meant for the flamethrower mod, if that goes out one day, uh, that I know of, you have to buy the whole kit again. I would assume someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't have $300 to spend. More than likely that kit won't go out like super fast, you know, but I mean, this is just the convenience I had and I made it work. So now I'm gonna put everything back together. I hope that makes sense. If not, you guys can DM me on my Instagram and I will try to explain it further because I know this is very confusing. I haven't really seen any videos of anyone doing it on YouTube. I have seen it with newer cars, but they tap into their ignition fuse on their fuse box and well, technically I can't do that with this, I guess you can say. But yeah, I did the ground trigger input from the ICM because when it passes the relay, it's not a hard, um, it's not a lot of load for the relay. It's just passing a trigger. It's like no amperage, but it's just ground, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm gonna put everything back together now. I hope that made sense. And I'm gonna show you guys how the relay and everything works once it's running. All right, all right. And just like that, everything is back together, nice and tucked away. Cap is on, wires are tucked away. These are as tucked as I can make them. Yep, and that's basically it. Just put it together. So now I'm gonna start the car, show you guys how it works, and hopefully I can get some flame on video. Yep. All right, so the car is running right now. You can see we're idling. This is the DPS, the manual And uh, this is what I mean. You can hear the idle die because once I hit my trigger, which is this right here, it kills or stops sending signal to my distributor ignition coil and sends it to the second one that I have mounted down there that then gives spark to the muffler. I hope that's making sense. The relay is basically what's switching everything. This is just my trigger. So once I tap it, you can hear it want to die out. You can tell the RPM fluctuates. If I hold it, the car will die. As you guys can see. And it's instant trigger. Now what's basically what's happening is every time I pull this back, that's right there. Oh, and also thing I forgot to mention right now, I just realized. Um, the ground for the relay, I have it right here on the starter itself. You can't see the terminal to have it very, 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 very hidden. But you can probably loop it and it's literally grounded right here on the starter. Like right there, just squeeze. You can see the wire just like fist in there. And I grounded on the starter because the starter is grounded up to the mission, grounded up to everything else, so I know it's proper ground. So yeah, you don't, wherever you mount it, that's where I did it because it's most convenient for me. But you ground it to anything else, thermostat ground, engine ground, chassis ground, battery, don't matter, as long as you get ground. So that's why I do that. And like I said, if your trigger is giving out ground, then you know, you just put that to that terminal and your power, you can use off the distributor. If that's making any sense. It may, may not make sense, but I'm trying to explain that as thoroughly as possible. To do the flames. In order for you to get flames out of your car, if you're gonna rev it. Um, I would suggest over anything above like four or five thousand. You never want to do it under 2k because you just won't. So, basically, the way it works is once you rev it and you kill the spark from your engine, sending it back to the spark plug in the back, you're basically gonna feather your throttle and that's gonna give unburnt fuel to your engine. And if it's not sparking back there or up here, it's gonna spark back here at your muffler and that's when it, it just ignites. Basically just burning unraw fuel and that's where you get the flameage. Um, I don't recommend doing it for a very long time when you do do it because like I said, or I will say, it can bring your exhaust valves and um, yeah, I just don't think it's that good. Um, I see Mustangs and stuff do that like constantly. I mean, I don't know if they're more that are built different. Um, on the motor, they're kind of bulletproof. You guys seen from my time ball video, but yeah so you'll rev it i do at least four or five thousand rpm and you can also do this while rolling um whatever your trigger is you know that's why i have mine right there so when i'm driving let's say i'm at four thousand rpm i have my trigger feather the throttle and you shoot boom like you just hear a flamethrower as long as you're holding the throttle and holding your trigger you will get the flame once you let go of that trigger the relay will then give a signal back to your distributor and your car will run again 
vice versa. If you're holding that trigger and you're not giving any throttle input, then it's not gonna send any unraw, raw, unburnt fuel and you won't get no flaming. I hope that makes sense. But I'm gonna show you right now what I'm talking about, how I'm gonna do it. Hope it's recording good. If not, then we'll try to get a roller shot. Give the video a thumbs up if you're able to do it mod. That's good. I'll do that while I'm driving. Um, yeah, hopefully nobody gets cold because of that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try a couple more times right now, and maybe tonight I'll see if I can get some roller shots because it is a big flame. It obviously some cars do it bigger. Like I said, I'm gonna try to move the spark plug behind the muffler, see if it being enclosed more maybe gets a bigger flame. But you know it works. Um, before I do that, though, let me show you guys how I do it into the car. So the way I know the flame is actually being enabled and working. Um, it literally sounds like a flamethrower guys like it genuinely sounds like a whole ass flamethrower like you hear it and it just like, that's exactly what it sounds like i don't know how much more thin it i probably made it sound a little weird but it legit sounds like a flamethrower you will rev your engine um about maybe f i try to do a 4k nothing higher because at that point i feel like it's too much load um same thing you can do while you're driving if i'm at the rpm Nothing lower than 2,000, I would suggest, because anything lower than that, then your engine's basically gonna wanna die. So, that range right there. Um, once you're ever to that range, um, you will hit your trigger, which this is mine right here. You hit whatever yours is. And from there, you give it a throttle, and you know, once you hear it, you hear it. So, you'll rev it up. Hit my trigger. Right there. I was feathering the throttle. I don't know if you guys heard it in the back right now, but it sounded like a flame. So I have to basically heat it up more. But as I'm pulling this and the RPM's going down, I am feathering my throttle. So literally just revving it, condition, throttle. That's how it works. It's kind of hard doing it right now while I'm showing you guys. I don't know if you guys heard that, but yeah, basically anytime you hear that, type noise um it's doing the flame like it just sounds like a freaking flamethrower do it one more time right now um see if i can get any bigger flame out of it because like i said the more it heats up the more we'll do it i personally don't like doing it for super long because i mean i feel like my exhaust valves are going to burn up um i'm assuming they are so yeah be cautious of when you do it where you do it at night time it's a lot brighter so yeah i'm gonna try this one more time and i'm gonna see if i can get some roller clips to end the video with it so yeah hope that's a good angle Uh, during the day you can't really see it um that's why i know some mustangs and all that you can see it a lot during the daytime um i don't know if it's because they have bigger engines or whatever i mean obviously we're just four cylinder but yeah i'm assuming this can technically work for another car um maybe if you can think of it i know how to but i'm not gonna explain this video because you know i'm not gonna go in depth on how to do it on a different car uh, mainly I did it for mine because I have never seen a video done on my specific chassis or 90s Hondas in specific because we can't tap into the fuse box like the hot link kit. I've seen one video on Instagram someone doing it with that kit. Um, I could have probably made it work to be honest but like I said I use the convenience of my stuff. The ignition coil is maybe like 
eighty dollars at AutoZone. Um, that really, at the most, if you get them from Amazon or the parts store, maybe like ten dollars at the most. Um, and then from there, the wire connectors. You're looking to spend maybe like a hundred and some change unless you're like a honda hoarder like i was i already have the ignition coil on hand have some wiring stuff you know maybe you have to spend 20 bucks on the wire i mean it kind of adds up but at the end of the day you're not spending like 300 and if something does go bad um you can just buy stuff new the ignition coil you can get lifetime warranty on it and you know things like that uh, another thing i do want to mention though is on the relay itself um god forbid it does go out while you're driving if it does go out while you're driving um what i did and i will show you guys what i did i made it so let's say if one day i'm driving because i do take this car pretty far it's smoking hot right now but the two wires that go into the relay one wire oh this is smoking hot right now one wire i put doesn't matter which wire you choose, but I chose the coil wire. I put a spade connector in line. I don't know if you can see it right there, so not that one. But, damn it. That wire right there has a spade connector on it. So, if it ever does mess up, I can disconnect the ICM wire from the relay and then disconnect it from right here and then just connect those two wires together and make it. OEM if that makes sense so basically just bypassing the relay and merging it back to its normal state and then once I get in the relay connect it back how it was if that makes sense I'm hoping it does I'm assuming it wasn't so went ahead and disconnected it this is the wire that goes from the ICM and this wire down here goes down to the relay that I just disconnected it if it ever goes bad I can just merge these two if that makes sense and once it's back on the relay, I just connect it back down here. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, it's probably stuck at recording. This wire will connect back to that. And the only reason I made it like that, just so like I said, if it goes bad, I just connect these two connectors and connect this wire down there. Hopefully that made sense. Really freaking hot. Oh my God, I already see because the car was running. But yeah, I tried taking away as much as possible. I hope for watching this video. Please, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, um, find someone that is, obviously. Someone learned something from this and maybe found out how to do it on your car, if it's not Civic, you know, any other brand. Um, I know some people are gonna say it's kind of dumb the way I did it because I'm using some OEM stuff, but it's what I had. And this is just how I figured out how to do it with this chassis and these older Hondas. Obviously, it seems to work great and i have not had any issues since then and again i'll repeat myself if you want to do it while driving as you're driving doesn't matter what gear you're in just hit the trigger give us some flame and yeah my intends to pop really loud when i do it when i let off the throttle and then i give it back ignition because sometimes there's still some fuel not burnt up in the engine so when i give it back spark to the engine it'll just sound like a grenade launcher being freaked out one thing it did do though, it kind of blew up my muffler a little bit, but yeah, it's bound to happen, right? But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if I do get a flame thick kit right now, we'll get a roller of it on the end of the clip, but if not, um, yeah. Hope you get a flame kit for the Civic. Peace out. See you guys in the next one.